Very excited to have this conversation with my friends and colleagues here on stage. I'm Stephen Adams, the moderator of this panel. I'm the founder of Valtic Global Media, which is a boutique management and production firm based in Los Angeles. And we're going to talk about a very specific case study of an international co-production that goes that spans the United States, Europe, and Africa, called Stolen. And I'll start with you, Chantel Rochester. How did this project come about? Um, okay, so it started um, with the Quasi Natal Film Commission um, wanting to support their South African producers by doing co productions. So they reached out to the UK company and they reached out to producers such as myself to come over to the country, which they paid for us to come over and basically do like a 10 day workshop with co-producers that um, they thought was at the same level as us in South Africa and also to meet all the financiers and funders in South Africa so that we can see if there were projects we could do together. Um, I went there and I instantly um, spoke to quite a few people um, and Uzan Kozi from Ants Media kind of became my favourite. Um, I felt that um, after a few whiskeys um, <laughs> if we can drink together, we can definitely make film together. Um, and that's how that came about. We decided that in terms of his slate and my slate, Stolen would be the first one that would be the most uh, beneficial one for the kids and then to have their first official co-production. And qu Sorry, question about that. So the script already existed before you went there or was it something that was created later? Okay. Um, so the script um, was written by Gary Young, who wrote Harry Brown, and uh, the script was, was, was done before I went there. And, um, but when I first got the script before we went there, it was actually written for um, a male lead. And I said to Gary, um, the company I want to create is about diversity, whether it be female, race, um, sexuality. I want to make sure that there's representation and where are the gaps in representation. And I felt that black women doing action was a huge gap, especially from the UK, because we, when we were looking for actors, we couldn't find them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, women doing action in general is rare. So to put a black female lead in that role is really quite groundbreaking. And I think that leads to uh, another question. I mean, uh, when did, at what point did uh, your director, Mr. Sheridan Myers, come on board? Okay. <laughs> um, so everybody for years have been telling me and Sheridan, we should work together, we should work together, you guys are great. Um, and I think it was during COVID that me and Sheridan developed that relationship. Obviously, a lot of people weren't shooting. Me and him were still making content. <laughs> um, we were just basically isolating everybody in one house and making content. And um, Gary, at that time, he was supposed to direct because it was we did his first film, Two Graves, which got sold to Netflix. And we were supposed to this was supposed to be a follow up. And he kind of came down a bit ill. It's okay now. Um, and he just said, you know, I don't think South Africa's the one for me. Uh, you're gonna have to find a new director. And I was like, oh no. Where am I gonna find a British director that I feel that can deliver the level of action, action thriller that I feel needs to be delivered as the first? And um, somebody said, go and see Sheridan. So literally, called Sheridan, he was cool. He was like, yeah, I'll come over to your house. And literally, you know, some things you don't have to force he came in, we sat down, he lives up the road from me. <laughs> and we just sat down and started chatting and it was like, yeah, you're the director. <laughs> Great. So Sheridan, what attracted you to this project and, 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 and what, how did you feel about all the international aspects of the story when you, when you, when you first encountered it? I think the, third, the first thing that really attracted me was like, like Michelle was saying, there was any black female lead leads action thrillers. Actually there's little to none black films with any kind of black females leading the actual scripts. So um, that was one thing that really sort of sparked out and I was actually sort of thinking about doing something with a black female lead, more of a faith based project. Um, but when Chantel sort of came to me I was like, oh my god, I was actually thinking about this like in, in like 
retrospect. Um, and it's kind of like what's happening right now is like, and what's really working is like um, multi territorial um, content, not on actually um, like from the business aspect for it, but from an audience perspective. And for me, it's always about audience perspective. Like everything that I make is kind of more about sort of what do I, what would I watch, and what would the audience kind of watch. Um, and I think people sort of really resonate with something like this. Um, set in South Africa, people don't really know about um, the city of Durban or even sort of a lot of um, films that are from South Africa. But um, cooperating with like a, a, a British um, um, like film with South Africa, but also with international cast, is something that's kind of future, um, especially for like streamers and for like future films that are going to be made. And can you tell us a little bit about the story without giving away any of the, you know, the no, no, no. salient <laughs> plot lines? I want to hear the story because it is an international story. Yeah. Why is it international? Why does that matter? Why is that the, the map for the rest of the process that we're going to be talking about? So what was really interesting, so the story is basically about um, this young mother. Um, she's ex-military. She starts up a security firm. She's looking after this really wealthy individual um, and protecting him. But she's also raising like this young teenage daughter who wants to go to South Africa to study. She gets um, caught up in a mishap in South Africa, presumed dead. So the, thought, the authorities actually contact her mum and say, look, your daughter's dead. She flies over and realizes it's a misidentity. Her daughter's still alive. So she goes on a mission to find her daughter. And I really, really want to tell you the twist but, <laughs> but I think it's going to blow everyone away because we're actually dealing with a lot of kind of um, interesting themes that affect a lot of individuals <coughs> worldwide and they're very serious criminal themes. Um, so I can't tell too much because it will give away the end. <laughs> <laughs> I think you took us right to the edge on that one, so that's good. <laughs> so let's talk about how this financing model came about. Clara, that is your world. So how, how was this film structured once you felt, you felt like this was going to work and uh, you had to pay for it? Yeah, so the finance plan obviously is structured with um, the KZN Film Commission. Uh, we also then got the support from the BFI. Uh, we've also got um, several sort of UK investors and investors on the South African side. Um, plus, the, we're utilising the tax credit in the UK and the DTI in South Africa as well. So that's the finance plan that makes up the budget of the film. And how complicated is that for you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can't pass this back then. We're gonna keep this conversation. Yeah, yeah. I hope it doesn't mess you up, but we're not doing that again. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it was complicated at first, I suppose, um, with the investor side of things and actually getting someone or the finances to believe in the project. It's quite unique. Um, black female lead thriller action packed. Is nice. it. So yeah, it's something unique. So that was quite hard. Individual investors, um, yeah, it's just how they'll get their money back. And just when we had the support from the BFI and also the KZN, that obviously that gives it a, a, yeah. a certain substance. And I mean, how how do you find how do you guarantee the money back? And you talk about some of the, you know, the the processes that people are going to buy into. Yeah, well, we've got a great distributor on on board. Uh, once we sign the distributor, sorry, distributor, um, we then obviously arrange some pre-sales. Um, that helps. I think what uh, you, you do struggle with, we have all kinds in the industry, is maybe some cash flowing some of the elements of the finance plan. But we've um, yeah managed to succeed and move forward with that. Are you able to tell us who the distributor is? Yes, uh, Cape Big Media is a distributor, and yeah, they've secured one one pre-sale already. Um, it's the U.S. Territory. It's fine. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't <laughs> <laughs> I like the. I want the spoilers. I want all the information. Who? Who are they? Okay, yeah, it's going to be a BET Plus original, and, oh, nice. yeah, and it's actually the first of a franchise. So we're really, really proud of ourselves. Yeah. And so this is breaking new ground for them too. I mean, this is an international. They've never done anything like that before. What? What? What was? What was it that attracted them to this project in particular? Well, I think it's a new time for film and TV, personally. And I think, you know, how many times can you see, no offense to anybody, Macbeth, but, 
you know, I've seen so many. Um, and I think also our culture audiences are getting smart about what we want to see. We want to see ourselves on the screen, you know, and um, I think that um, what attracted them to it is that one, when you go say UK film independent, we're not talking about studio film, and we're not talking about Tandy Newton here, we're talking about independent film, structure it and raise the finance ourselves. You don't have one like this. Um, and even though the UK is one of the emerging markets, so they say, where is the black part of that emerging market? Because you can't call on a, a rom-com, you can't call on a boys in the hood. Where, where is that whole bridge of comedy, action thriller? It doesn't exist. So I think BET kind of just looked at it and thought, wow, how do we that? Um, the, the conversation has kind of been, well, we've been looking for UK action thriller and we can't find it. Um, and I think when we came up and it was like, yes, please, because that deal was done in a matter of weeks, literally that deal was given and then it was like yeah okay cool and that deal was signed and given back to us so it just shows that it, there's a big big gap in the uk market for this so the bottom the, the bottom line is that the ip was really powerful and strong which speaks to your mutual taste and then the fact that you put your back into that and they got they got the story so dan what was your role on the project well, my role was when you brought me the project and you need help with the cast, what I do is packaging. Uh, I come from an agency background, so I was an APA uh, and worked with some of the biggest talent and with those relationships on this producing side. Uh, it was easy access for me to help package per the needs of the film, based off of value, based off of who the cast wish list was. And I, the way it really operate is, I ask for the cast wish list to let you know who I have relationships with and start making the phone calls for the people that I know have value and BET Plus gave us a name and we made sure we got them and we made the dates work and it was really, it was exciting. Well, and you make that sound so easy. I mean, yeah, everybody yeah, just knows yeah, lots and lots and lots of yeah, actors and just signs thing. them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that takes years of, of relationship building and trust building because people aren't just going to give you their talent because you're so charming on the phone. Uh, and they need to know that it's backed by a, a lot of different things. So you were able to convey the structure that we're talking about and all the work that they've done and what it was landing on and then a very reputable uh, distributor and, and, and output so that's this is great so let me talk let me talk to you again Claire about some of the challenges the challenges of stitching together all those multiple entities what is it like juggling those things and what advice do you have for people who are trying to do that um, yeah I think it's very cost driven I think you know that's how you get the investment into you know, individual private investors definitely um, go on cost um, to be honest, yeah, the, the BFI, um, just having their name attached to the KZN Film Commission, that's very, very important. Um, when you have the distributor as well, I think that really helps because that helps with sales agents, um, you know, sort of the sales estimates. Um, so I think that's, you know, how, how it's structured. She's being very modest here because she didn't talk about that. That's not how I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it was I, can, I can remember certain phone calls. Right. <laughs> She's being modest. It's the first time on the panel. Listen, it was not like that. Um, we had the structure all in place just before COVID. Two weeks before COVID, they grounded all the planes in the UK. Um, I was still hoping that I'd get on the plane and at least be grounded in South Africa because I could still make a film. Um, but that wasn't to be. So I literally cried in my bed for about three days and I was like, okay, girl, you gotta get up now. Um, I was like, we've got to do something about this. And I was like, but I was still woke up and I was like, but this is the challenges for me and the team. We didn't expect to face these challenges because to be fair, we didn't think that these challenges existed. You know, we thought, I guess the UK a lot is brought up on American um, content. Mm. So we think we've seen that film and we think we've seen this film and that film. But when you actually see in terms of UK cast and UK, we haven't. It hasn't been done. We didn't realise we were booting off doors. We just thought we were going to get there and someone was just going to open it for us, which is so not the case. Um, so then basically after coming out of my bed, we lost then being grounded. Six months later, we lost 
one of the half of our finance, one of our investors lost his money on stocks as that started to plummet. So I stopped crying by that point because boy, I was in deep anyway. I was like, okay, so what we're gonna do, let's focus on so what we did is we focused on other productions. We've done the Black British Theatre Awards for Sky Arts with Kwame Kwe and Marty Young Vic. Um, and then we've done other smaller projects. And then I was like, no, you know what? 20, literally 20, late 2020, I said, no, we've got to get this together. We can't just be outed like that, you know, we, we face more and worse stuff. So I was like, okay, let's get it back together. A week later, the other financier lost his money. <laughs> I only had to by that point. I was like, come on, God, help me out here. Um, so I was like, okay, cool. No, we got this, we got this. Then Gary called me and said, you know what, I don't think I'm going to be able to direct. <laughs> I was like, okay, so I've got a, I've got a script now, because I'm back to the beginning now. And sometimes, you know what, sometimes getting back to the beginning is just God's way of showing you, you know what, you're going to get it better and bigger and better the next time. And that's exactly what it is now. You know, literally, we had Sheridan come straight, you know, to my door. Then we had a director who was great and who understand the vision, could see what and bring a totally different view on it. Um, then literally, I was on Steve's phone going, Steve. Help me out. <laughs> and that's why I gave, you. that's why I said, Dad, <laughs> yeah. take this call. <laughs> um, help me out. And Jump in. Well, no, you no. know, the, the, the kind of thing is, you know, I'm sure some of you feel makers go for it. And, and sometimes it's good to talk about a panel so people feel comfortable that you're not the only one. You know, me, Dan, Claire, all of us, Steve has been on the phone. You know, we're UK, so you can imagine UK time wakes up before US. US doesn't wake up. A little bit. Two, <laughs> two in the afternoon, that's there like nine o'clock. You know, so we've nearly finished our day. We get jumping on the phone at like midday. That's like go home time for us. Mm -hmm. We're on the phone till 12, midnight, mm -hmm. one, two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm still getting up at six o'clock in the morning, you know. It's not, it wasn't just an easy journey, but it just makes it all the more sweeter when you get to this position. Yeah, no, you, you, yeah. you bring up some fascinating things about, I'm just gonna leave yeah, that there. Maybe. You leave some fascinating, you bring up some fascinating things about what happens on projects. And these things happen so frequently mm -hmm. where money's lost, Directors fall out. Um, we have all sorts of uh, variables, and you talk about the hand of God too. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's important to sometimes realize that you're actually being prepared for something by losing. Yes. You're actually becoming stronger. Mm -hmm. You're actually more determined to fulfill your vision. You're actually more prepared than you were in 2020 to make this damn film. And you've thought about it, you've drilled into more details, your business got tighter, we know that. Mm -hmm. The business, you know, the, 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 the determination to stitch those things together got, got even more sharp. So, I mean, you know, you said it was easy yeah. to call this. What, what, what about some of the challenges, Dan, please? <laughs> I'll elaborate. Don't sell a dream to anybody here. <laughs> yes, it is very, very hard. It is, uh, so I was a talent agent for 12 years, built a ton of relationships with managers and other agencies and covering some of the biggest uh, projects as well as talent. And the way we, I always operate is when Chantal gave me the script, I immediately knew, okay, you have this person, this person, and this person I can go to, the package. Because again, with the value in the international marketplace and having that knowledge from talking to distributors and sales agents and just building up all of that knowledge, it allowed me to kind of have a really good grasp on the international market and what people could bring and what their value is too. So you don't technically have to overpay for talent because your budget can skyrocket if that happens. Because that's where a distributor will look at your package, your budget. And if you're overpaying for an actor in the value of the international space or domestic for the US, uh, they can say, you're like, we're not gonna touch this because you won't recoup. And so you really have to walk a fine line there. And it was funny because, not funny, but on top of that, you lost your lead actress. <laughs> oh yeah, we did. Some you did. That. <laughs> so that's all. She comes. To me, so we lost our lead actress. Like it was all set, cast, everything. Uh, we lost our lead. This was like three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> no. Listen, don't put me through the ringer on this one. Uh, it has, it's going to be great, clearly. Um, yeah, so a couple of, we got to the beginning of the year now. We're all ready to go. Alice has packaged it. Um, I just have to give a big shout out to Carla Hilbrick, who, who introduced us to our distributor. Been fighting the battle for us back there. Um, big media, they've been fantastic. And literally, I've told everybody, we're ready to go, let's go, we're shooting. It's, you know, this was, this was like February. So we're planning on shooting in March. I get a call early March. Um, 
So your talent, which I won't say who it was, um, so she's been taken by ITV, they're paying four times as much, and um, <laughs> yeah, you can't have her. <laughs> I was like, what? But she really just worked for them, I thought she weren't going back for the series. Well, she was so great, they want her back, sorry, and it's shooting all over summer, you won't be able to get her until 2023. <laughs> I was like, come on, God, help me out here. I was like, okay, cool. But after all of the stuff I told you, I was much stronger by that point, as Steve says. I was like, all right, cool. Who are we going to get? Now, the problem we had in the beginning is finding a UK um, lead that wasn't like Tandy doing A list that we couldn't afford. Um, and also keeping the leads UK. Because it was like, well, you know what? You're just going to have to go and get an American lead. That's just going to have to be the fallback. You know, you're going to have to pay scheduled air for something like that and do that. And I was like, no, we need a UK. It's a UK and South African. Slow down. Use the term schedule F. Elaborate. Oh, sorry. Schedule yeah. F is like a, um, a, a certain amount to pay, 65 like K. That's like a just set standard pay for an actor. You don't always get it for every actor. Screen Actors, really Screen actors Guild. But the Screen yes. Actors Guild, as Steve yeah. said, uh, in America. Um, so, um, yeah, so uh, it was like, where are we going to find? We, we struggled the first time. Um, and it was, it was really like, it, I mean, a year going back and forth. Who, 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 we can't afford them, they're available, speaking to the agent. We're not going below this. You know, you can't have them until 2026. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it was all of that. And then we got to that stage and it was like, okay, who? And literally I was on Steve saying, Steve, Dan. 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 <laughs> I think literally I'm, I swear Dan's wife must know all of us because we've been talking to us <laughs> yes. o'clock in the morning. <laughs> literally, that's what it takes to get it done, you know. But it, it's a thing of like, we all were so passionate about it. We, we can see the vision for it. And we can see sometimes the effort that has to go into being the first. Sheridan, what are the challenges as a director to go through these kinds of processes? I mean, this is there, there are different sets of responsibilities up here. What do you need to do to make these things move forward? Well, yeah, I think everyone's sort of mentioned the thing about scheduling, because um, as a director, you get booked up on other things. So you're always constantly juggling your own schedule with either, because I'm a writer director, so it's, it's easier if you're writing, but you still have to deliver certain things to either like a TV station or um, a distributor or et cetera, et cetera. But while, while you're directing, so I direct a few sort of TV shows and also my own personal projects, plus I'm directing commercials and music videos. Um, so it's kind of like thinking in your head, okay, can I take that job, can I take that job, can I take that job and fit in that schedule? But at the same time, it's sort of um, also fitting into that vision because in your head you're thinking, okay, we've, we've landed the actor or the actress and you're thinking like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do with her, this is how I'm gonna light her, this is how I'm gonna, make a move, oh, I think she can actually portray it in this way, in that way. So like on a creative aspect, you're sort of thinking intricacies, can she deliver those elements within the script? Because every actress is actually different and they will bring something different to the table. So you always have to have that in your back of your mind as a creative thinking about, okay, will she fit into your vision? Because I think sometimes as a director you get, okay, yeah, she's perfect. I'm gonna really do that with her. But when that changes, it can spin you out a little bit, but you know, I think that's the name of the game and sort of like coming over those obstacles are like really important as well. And I actually wanted to ask you another question. I could have done it without the mic. <laughs> but I'll keep it here since I've got it now. Um, how do you strategize to cross cultures? And do you have to make a different, d different approach with people from different cultures? How does that work for you as a director? Um, I, I think it's, it's, I find it quite easy sort of maneuvering through cultures. It's just because um, basically where we grew up, it's like very multicultural. Um, I think where I grew up in Peckham, it's called Little Africa anyway, because it's got like literally every African nation within one high street. Um, <laughs> no. no, it's true, it's, true. it's known that like, every, if you want something for your hair, if you want something for like, you know, your skin tone, you go to Peckham, my area, yeah. it's cool, you have <laughs> like, it's the way. Um, so I think in terms of like, that aspect, London is like, I feel like the probably most more cultural place in the world, like where we grew up in South London. Um, so I think like growing up and having that authenticity and sort of growing up with like, um, 
every single sort of um, person from around the world has really helped me sort of um, develop and engage not just as a director but as a human being and tell those authentic stories. Mm. Great. Actually, I want to pass it. Here, let me play it. I'm going to do this. This is it. Yeah. Clara, what do you wish every finance person knew about international co-productions? What, and what advice would you give them? Um, I suppose where to go for that finance. I think that's very important. Um, I think it's just partnered up with the right people, um, people who actually believe in, in the project that you're doing. Um, and can see, you know, what we see as the, you know, the final film, basically. And how do you go about, I mean, like for a neophyte producer who wants to master, you know, I'd like a Rolodex full of finance people. Where would I start? Where would you start? Sorry, if I wanted to be, if I were, let's say I'm a young producer who's starting off in the world, and I want to make my signature that I know where to find money, but I don't know where to find money. How do I start doing that? And with any kind of credibility? Um, just connections, I think. I mean, you've got, um, yeah, just case, you know, partnerships, um, investors, I think, individual investors, that's what I was originally used to. Um, you know, some general people just investing into the film, they might love the film, so, um, you know, they, they'll, they've got the insight to actually invest into that. Um, that's got harder, so I think it's better now to go to the finance companies themselves, um, reach out to people like you, yourself, also. And um, we've also, like um, Chantel sort of said, we've got a, a great um, agency, you know, ex agents work for us that actually on our behalf go out and seek finance. So I think it's just, yeah, learning, um, go to the finance forums that mm. people like can, um, and just learning about that. Great. One thing, I forgot, LinkedIn. Yeah, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Big shout out to LinkedIn. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. because um, through the COVID period, Obviously, you can do anything. So a lot of adding, lots of connections on LinkedIn. That's quite valued. I think that's how we connected, and I spoke to you yourself and Theo, mm -hmm. um, and just yeah, really getting your your slate out there, or the projects out there, whatever you're working on, and just see if we can resonate with people. But yeah, LinkedIn. That's <laughs> that as well. Um, I think yeah. Um, I double up what Claire said. Mark is important. Um, I think sometimes there's a rush to go and I need to finance my film, I need to finance my film. And you finance with people that you're just about to get into a marriage with and you don't like. You know, I think um, we see sometimes financiers as the money, but we forget that they're human beings who have their own interests, who have their own things that they want to do. And I find the best relationships with finances are the ones that you resonate together because then it becomes a collaboration of making something important. Um, rather than having somebody that just, oh, even sometimes you meet finances to sort of chuck money at you, but then that's going to become a problem later on because they don't have any, they don't understand what you're trying to do in the future for that film. Um, so I would say definitely go to the markets. LinkedIn is definitely a big space because it's more for the business aspect um, of all types of businesses because finances are not just going to come from film, they're going to come from science, they're going to come from um, property, they're going to be all different types of that. Um, and what I would say as well is you can find finances, companies expect big big percentages taken away <laughs> um, from you, but also do a lot of pitching. You know, a lot of people have got finance or money for scripts, money for development. Um, you guys do like Holly Shorts. Um, and also look at your funds in your local respective countries. You know, we were lucky to be um, looked after by the UK Global Screen Fund. Shout out to them. Uh, Neil, Annabelle, um, everybody on the team, Christine, um, because not only did they support the film and give us grant financing, which is soft money, which means we don't have to give it back, um, which then helps to lower the amount of money you need to raise from investors. Um, so, but also they also helped us, supported us, and, and have been champions talking about us when we're not even there. Um, and so I would say go to all those elements and also think about the subject of your film because some films are funded by the charities of that subject you know really do delve into the actual project you're actually making because you'll really find pockets of people depending on what your subject matter is and uh, depending on what country you're shooting in what area you're shooting in you know so these are the things i would say to think about and analyze your own project first and you'll find that you come up with little things that you go oh i never thought about that that's, I think, a good way to kind of break it down and get in the right investor. Great. 
And I think we have time for one last comment. So when you talk about, I love, I love the fact that you're threading this all through about passion, vision, purpose, because none of that changes if you're really an artist. And I think at the end of the day, there's an artist inside of everyone that's up here, even if they're looking at, looking at figures and facts or, 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 or international treaties or tax rebates. You're still doing it because you want to see that picture happen. So what do you, how do you convey that passion, Dan, when you're talking to an, another agent or, or, or manager of someone to get them excited enough to talk to their client about the project that we have? For me, how I always convey the passion. One, I read the project, I know what it is. What we take on our slate, we are very passionate about. We get pitched a lot and we only really take something that we full heartedly want to do. And when you sent Stolen, it was an amazing script. And I was like, we have to do this, Steven. Mm. And then that's why we jumped in and immediately started helping out everything you need. Even in the early morning, I'm on the East Coast in, the, in America, so all hours. <laughs> so. Uh, pitching it to different agencies and their clients and expressing that passion of the project, showing them what this is about, the underlying themes and why it would be great for their client uh, and what the production is going to be doing. And so all these different elements, depending who the client is, I adjust to who it is because everyone's different and unique. And just having those relationships and understanding the talent and what they want to do, or if they haven't done it before, for example. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, if they've never done the role before, it's something that you could possibly get a bigger actress or actor to do. And I did that in other films. And this one, when the actress fell out mm -hmm. <laughs> a couple months ago, we replaced her pretty fast. Yeah. So four weeks <laughs> with negotiations. So yeah, Plenty that was and late nights, yeah, late nights. <laughs> and so it didn't delay too much farther, but it was good. Um, and I just wanted to also say who the cast were. <laughs> yes, please. So um, we did cast our main character Celine as Christine Adams. Um, we also have uh, Bromwell, our villain. Um, he's not a villain in real life, he's really a nice guy. <laughs> um, his name is Luca Peros. And we also cast, um, I'll let you guys say the rest yeah. of it. <laughs> <laughs> Alba Ramadani. Um, I'm blanking. Yeah. Yeah. And, Jimmy, yeah. and, and, and Mr. Jimmy Jean-Louis. Jimmy Jean-Louis. And Lux, Luxolo yeah. Domini from uh, Jiva. Jiva. Yeah. And so Netflix. we're excited about this really, really diverse cast. It's a pretty amazing thing. And of course, I'm going to end up in this, in this now because we're just about to start rolling the cameras on this film soon. There'll be another conversation about the other challenges of shooting the film in multiple <laughs> countries. But until then, we're going to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.